I'm studying in the second main course and I'm having trouble understanding the difference between the astral body and the astral realm. How strong are the boundaries of the astral body? The thing is that I have heard the opinion of colleagues from senior courses that the astral realm is common, and cleansing one's astral body is like plowing the sand in the desert or pouring water through a sieve. I realize that cleansing is helpful and I can see the results, but as someone who is passionate, I want to refrain from cleansing a space that is not my own. How can I feel the boundaries between my own astral space and that of others. There may be an answer to this question somewhere, but I have not found it. Perhaps the information is escaping my attention, and in general the issue of what is mine and what is not mine is a key issue to work out in this lifetime. Yes, Kali, you are absolutely right. But look, don't spare any effort. You don't feel bad about cleansing your own astral body, but at the same time you don't want to cleanse the common astral realm. But you know, it's like observing the personal hygiene of the body, never cleaning your apartment, thinking, I'm not the only one living there, so let the others clean it themselves and I'll just wash my body thoroughly. But that's not fair. If it is a common space, then it is fair for everyone to clean it up. Now to the question of what is yours and what is not yours. One's own astral space is one's own emotional realm. And we have discussed this before. It is controlled by the mental body and nourished by the etheric body. Control is not only about the rules of using your energy resources, especially those of your astral body, but also about setting boundaries. Your mental body itself determines what is yours and what is not, or rather, your picture of the world determines it. It has clear attitudes, what is mine and what is not mine, who is a friend and who is an enemy, where is my space and where is someone else's space. Your astral realm is within the boundaries defined by your mental body, beyond those boundaries is someone else's astral space. When you interact with something that is your own, when your mental body says, this is my person, this is my space, this is my territory, those boundaries fall down. When you interact with something in your mental body says, this is someone else's space, this is a stranger, this is foreign territory. Those boundaries rise, this is a way for you to determine if this is your space or not. The astral realm is never static because we communicate with different people, so this boundary is constantly changing. But something purely private, such as personal emotions, attitudes toward yourself, aspects that do not depend on your own principle, nor on the space you are in. That is exactly your astral space. When you are in a zero state, when no one and nothing outside is disturbing you, the astral body feeds your mental body because it works with your inner world. As soon as you start interacting and communicating with outer space, the astral body expands and forms the common astral realm with the systems and people you are interacting with at that moment. When we cleanse our astral body, we cleanse our astral connections, which are the inner connections between our own mental and astral bodies. In fact, we cleanse our inner space of personal attitudes so that this inner space no longer limits us or, on the contrary, does not force us to communicate with the outer space when it's not necessary for our consciousness neither at the level of dense energy bodies nor at the level of more subtle informational bodies. It is the I am that determines it. The very I am that we call the soul, which is the state when we are in touch with our own essence. When we are in the state of the I am, all the subtle bodies come to an inner immersion in themselves. That's why it's possible to determine something that is yours and something that is not yours. Because in that state you're very much in touch with it. But without sorting out something that is yours, you will never become independent of something that is someone else's, because there can be an internal substitution of concepts.
If you won't be able to recognize something of your own, then you may get a lot of disappointment. First, because you may violate the rights of others. And second, because you may fall into illusions or temptations, as believers like to say. You can fall into illusions and get a lot of disappointment by putting your emotional power into something that's not yours when it absolutely shouldn't have been done because it's not right for you. That will be my answer to you. So work with your astral body. You are asking yourself the right questions, but you can only answer them in the state of the I am. Only the I am knows what is specifically yours and what is not yours. And that's what you need to work with.